Okay, we're back here live on day three of theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Jeff Frick here. Um, day three, we're with Ross Turk, who's the Vice President of Community at Inc. Tank, which is, you guys manage around Ceph and around all the other uh, components around, obviously involved in OpenStack pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. um, Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So obviously, uh, community, you're involved in, in, in dealing with all the open source activity and all the people developing. Um, so let's just share with the folks first about the company, your company, and Ceph and what's going on around that, and then we can dig into the OpenStack conversation. Sure, uh, InkTink is the primary sponsor of the Ceph project. Uh, it was spun out of a hosting company called DreamHost last year. Uh, the Ceph project has been in development since 2004 and it's an open source distributed storage platform. Um, it started off as uh, a Department of Energy uh, sort of experiment or, or, or funded project to figure out how to make a distributed file system that really, really scaled. But out of all that thought uh, came Ceph, which is more than a distributed file system, it's a complete storage solution, and what makes it different is how it scales. Different, so so what storage is it open source? I mean, is it pure like commodity drives? Is it specific vendors? Because I mean, we've had NetApp on, on earlier, they're sure. doing some work in this area. Um, what storage in particular? So Ceph is, it's, it's different from a lot of that because it's software, it's not hardware, yeah. right? So Ceph is a, it's a software layer that sits on top of everyday hardware and exposes those storage resources of that hardware in, in, in a way that's useful. Uh, so it's, it exposes it as, a, as object block and file storage, uh, depending on what you need. So, so. so it's commodity storage. It's commodity not hardware. Not like a brand name like a NetApp or EMC. That's right. So they're competing with that from an open source standpoint, basically. So the open compute uh, initiative must be interested in this. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, definitely. Um, yeah, so NetApp obviously was on, on Monday and they have their filers out there. So, mm -hmm. so obviously the storage is a big part. In fact, we, uh, one of the comments was storage is afraid of OpenStack because there's a lot of disruption going on. So mm -hmm. what is the big thing about Ceph that's getting traction in, in the enterprise and the OpenStack community in particular? Is it the positive compliance? Is it, is it the, some of the things you guys done with it? What's the big aha around Ceph? What do people need to know? I would think the big, the big three ahas. The first one is lowest cost per gig because it uses commodity hardware and because of its self-managing and self-healing capabilities. It, it's a little less difficult to administer than a lot of other storage systems. Uh, it was built exactly for that. So keeping the costs low on storage is super important, especially as the scale is starting to get crazy, right? We're seeing this hockey stick in scale. Uh, it, storage is not scaling linearly, so the technology shouldn't scale linearly either. So that's the first. The second, I think, is the really good level of integration that Ceph has with OpenStack uh, and, and CloudStack and Proxmox and Gennady and a, a lot of the other cloud stacks uh, and integration with the Linux kernel and that sort of stuff. So uh, a focus on integration is definitely number two. And then I just completely forgot what I was going to say for number three. So, so that's, that's good. Well, maybe we'll service <laughs> in the next okay. question. Yeah. <laughs> the slides are not rolling, as we no, said. No, no slides. Yeah, yeah. There's a that's uh, good. vendor hype free zone here. <laughs> so talk, let's talk about OpenStack in particular. So what what are you guys doing with OpenStack in this in the storage area? Obviously, software defined, uh, software led, as we call software led infrastructure, is mm -hmm. our our vision. We don't really call it software defined because it's not yet defined. It's evolving very fast. <laughs> sure. And you also have the advent of Flash, which David Floyer, Wikibon covers extensively. Mm -hmm. Those things are changing the game. So scale out open source is really the key. Yeah. How do you guys work with OpenStack? Can you share some of the, some of the things there? Sure, so uh, our integration with OpenStack is sort of in two different areas, the object and the block, right? So on the object side, uh, we speak the Swift API northbound, so applications written for Swift uh, will work with, uh, we'll with Ceph in an OpenStack context, and same thing with S3. If you have an application for S3, it works too. Uh, we also integrate with Keystone over there for authentication management and that sort of stuff. On the block side, uh, we have integrations with uh, Cinder, Glance, and Nova so that you can boot virtual machines off of uh, images that are distributed uh, amongst the entire storage cluster, and uh, you do interesting things also like uh, uh, create um, create volumes from images uh, instantly. So it's 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 it makes it a lot easier to to manage large numbers of virtual machines. What is the big um, interest from the enterprise? Because I talk to CIOs and they're <laughs> saying, hey, you know, we need to have these boxes checked off, POSIX compliance, and if this support all these little these nuances um, that. You know, open source developers kind of not really think about that operational side. Mm -hmm. So what has been the traction in the enterprise? What's the interest level like? And, and what use cases <coughs> uh, do you guys fit? Well, the, the primary use case in the enterprise is private cloud. 
for us today. Um, and I think it's just because it's, it, it, it lines up really nicely with Ceph's architectural uh, uh, theories, right? The, the, the scaling out in every sense. Um, a lot of the, uh, the more uh, traditional storage stuff uh, is, is in the future for us. We're looking mostly at private cloud deployments today just because it seems to, um, it, it just fits the scalability profile stuff really well. So we're targeting, uh, if you look at the financial industry, you have data needs there that are growing just like crazy, right? So we try to focus on being the most cost effective and most easily managed. What use ever. cases and what, who are you disrupting? Which vendors? Obviously EMC has a large presence in the enterprise. Um, so as guys buying EMC drives, what do they look at this? It's a lot of extra work. I got to bring in commodity storage. I got to set that up, stand that up, and I got software. Um, how do I manage it? Well, those are, um, those are those legit questions they have. It's a very and they legitimate might not even question. have the people to actually do it. Right? Sure, yeah. sure. So well, it's it's really important, uh, just just as 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 anything that, that we're seeing here at the OpenStack Summit, uh, to have a lot of the um, the build automation and, and 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 systems like Puppet and Chef and Juju. Uh, we we're working on getting integration with those, so that it's it's easier to manage these distributed systems because, as you suggested, instead of having a single box with a sort of single purpose, now we're talking about hundreds or thousands of boxes, yeah. so management is a big issue. But we're relying heavily on the efforts of the, of the folks who are working on Puppet and Chef and, and But you're seeing, so and Jeff wants to ask a question, but I want to get this out, but you're seeing clearly that the scale out is the preferred way, right? For, yeah. for, event, for the environments you're in? Absolutely. Absolutely, okay, cool. yeah, that's that we we, 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 we we do best in environments that are focused on scale out. <laughs> and, and is it really to, to be able to implement, <clears throat> excuse me, new applications? Is, are these new business applications that are enabled because of this massive storage, or is it just simply a less, uh, less cost alternative to do what they were doing before, or are you enabling it? And if it is new things, you know, what are some kind of the, the business applications that people are using this new cheaper storage that they couldn't do before? Interesting. Um, well, again, I mean, I go back to the cloud, right? A lot of the greenfield opportunities that we have in the enterprise, at least, are are, are private cloud, okay. and it, I think it's because people are starting to look at how they can make their resources more elastic, right? Okay. I mean, you can uh, you can say a lot of things about NetApp and EMC and all of that, but the, the Ceph strives to be ultimately elastic. So any type of workload that needs that uh, HPC, big data workloads are also really well suited for Ceph. Okay, so it's really the elasticity, adding and subtracting, and, and really morphing the requirements dynamically as opposed to kind of a static, yeah. as, we, as somebody else earlier said, you know, kind of mapping your storage to your application needs on a one-to-one -one basis. Yeah. So I have a little bit of a shift gears, you know, here, we're here at OpenStack, and it's it's interesting that there's all these kind of open source projects that are now coming from different parts of, of the uh, infrastructure and merging. Mm -hmm. You've been involved in stuff. How is it? how do you see kind of this uh, confluence of, of open source projects now coming together to really provide an open source uh, option for the enterprise with these, you know, SQL and Linux and and uh, Ceph, and it just seems to be going on on MongoDB. I mean, it, but uh, it's just curious they've all been kind of independent projects, but now clearly to to execute well in the enterprise, they all got to kind of work together. So how is that being involved in the foundations and? How do, how do these groups work together? Well, open sourcing the enterprise is nothing new, of course, right? right? I think it's just moving up the stack a little bit. Right. Um, in the early phase, you know, for the early, the early 2000s, the, that, the solution to that was a Linux distribution, right? Today, I think the solution to that is, uh, is really good definitions around interoperability, good adherence to API standards, um, strong systems like Chef and Puppet that can understand the interdependencies between systems and deploy them in an intelligent way, uh, and, the ephemeral state, or the, the ephemeral nature of a lot of cloud computing, I think makes some of that easier as well. Okay. You know, um, things, uh, things can, uh, things like continuous integration uh, will, they, they help make sure that things are integrated properly as they're being developed. Okay. So there's been a lot of, there's been a lot that's happened since Linux hit the enterprise that, that make it a lot easier for people to take that risk. Okay. Ross, I want to ask you about, obviously, the buzz here. So what are you hearing here at OpenStack Summit? Obviously, it's a record crowd, and they expect the, the growth to be bigger next time. It's a lot of, obviously, a lot of interest. Yep. Again, it's, it's not a uh, hype, hype area right now. There's a lot of developers doing some stuff. What are the core issues you're hearing around storage here? I mean, what are the, what are the, what are the hallway conversations, and specifically, things you've heard in sessions? Well, I haven't had a chance to make it to many sessions because, <laughs> you know, it's, it's Okay, what are you hearing summit, at the parties and what are you hearing from your, <laughs> from your <laughs> peers? <laughs> I mean, storage is a hot area. It's the epicenter of all the action storage. You've got big data, you got mm -hmm. as a key element of the operating environment in cloud and it's not going away and this, you know, flash memory is accelerating different architectures and it's quickly disrupting the marketplace. What are you hearing people talk about? Hmm. Well, I'm hearing people talk about Ceph, so that's good. <laughs> that's, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, I'm, I, 
in uh, OpenStack in general, I think we're hearing more about users, right, than, than developers. And that's been the most interesting thing at this OpenStack Summit for me was hearing uh, big companies talking about how they're going to be using OpenStack, which is, is something that is becoming more I increasingly uh, interesting, right? Um, it, particularly for us because we're starting to see some of our biggest users come out and talk about Ceph publicly, which is, is a lot of fun. So what's on your roadmap right now? So what's the, what's the, um, the next uh, year look like for Ceph? What's the key things that you guys will be working on and, and where's the attention going to be focused in on? I think our biggest challenge, our biggest upcoming challenge is figuring out the multi-availability zone thing. Like uh, right now, Ceph, the way it works, uh, is a land scale technology because it does replication synchronously and uh, is designed to for consistency. So figuring out how to allow people to have one Ceph cluster in this availability zone and another in a different availability zone and have them work together is a big challenge for us. And we've got a lot of good ideas, but that's that's a big challenge we're working with the community to figure out. What about like upgrades and automation and, and configuration management side? So you mentioned <laughs> Puppet and Chef, obviously mm -hmm. those are popular tools. Yeah. Are there other envi legacy environments that you're bumping into that you need to support? Like obviously the big enterprises and service providers, that some not all not all of them have a clean sheet of paper. They yeah. have to deal with their existing legacy. How do you guys integ integrate with that? Well, I mean there are a couple of prototype iSCSI uh, target implementations for Ceph, and uh, there are uh, the community has built things in uh, Samba and Ganesha to allow Ceph to speak SIPs and NFS for for the the typical scale, scale out NAS workloads and that sort of thing. But a lot of the people who are using Ceph today are actually greenfield. Yeah, you know. and they're like cloud providers. Cloud providers, service providers, uh, exactly. Um, some people not even cloud providers, some people are just storage as a service yep. providers. Well we know you're getting a lot of interest in the enterprise folks we talk to, and because of the compliance issues, right? That's a big thing. Um, how's the community? I mean, talk about the uh, community, obviously that's your, you're in charge of that. Yeah, what are yeah. some of the dynamics going on? I mean, what are you seeing just in general, you know, looking at over the open source horizon, you know, obviously they talk about OSCON is where Rackspace um, mm -hmm. kicked off OpenStack. Mm -hmm. You have the Hadoop community, you have other different communities, Linux communities. So there's almost a blending now of the, of the crowds and the communities. Um, can you share your opinion on what you see happening and to help people understand how to navigate the different communities and is there any common threads together that you're seeing, any signals? That's a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> Take whatever you want, just <laughs> jump ball. <laughs> okay. um, what's well, going on in the community? I'll, st I'll, start, I'll start with the first. Uh, I'll start with what's going on in the Ceph community. Uh, I think I've snagged yeah, this. That's good. What's going on in the Ceph community? Um, massive growth in adoption, massive growth in participation, overwhelming growth in participation, actually. We're, we're at the point uh, where the community management team at Ceph is trying to figure out, okay, we have a lot of people who want to contribute to the project, how do we do that in an orderly fashion that, mm -hmm. that, that maintains, maintains the quality of the project and that maintains its architectural integrity? So that's the big challenge for us. Um, and the it's, governance. It's a huge challenge. Governance, exactly, governance. Uh, and, and, and engineering processes and practices are a huge challenge for us. We look beyond that to the community, it's, it's fascinating. It, I've been in the open source community for a really long time and I found that everybody who in the early years was saying, oh, I'm an open source person, is now saying I'm a cloud person. You know, I think that's a really interesting movement. Um, the the open source and cloud communities are are really intermingling, and you know, it, it's it's funny. <laughs> Back in my early career, I used to think that the job of a community manager was temporary because eventually everybody will be a community manager. You know, just like no 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 company has an internet department these days. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's so, native. Yeah, and so uh, all kinds of companies who did not have community intelligence before, have community intelligence now, and that's fantastic to see. And you're seeing people really understand the, the maturization, maturing of for these protocols, these implied, implicit protocols, you know, con contribution, mm -hmm. not just a marketing statement. Yeah. And that's been something that oh, Rackspace, I think, uh, you know, hats off to Rackspace, what they did with OpenStack, I mean, they could have, you know, <laughs> kept it kind of internal and put up, you know, red herring out there, community, and you know, make it look like a community, but they went all in. And the you call that faux open source. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it? Faux open source, like faux, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, but, but again, but they've proven the business model side of it is actually interesting. Their, their lift as a company, they can move the ball down the field because yeah. they now have got a huge pool of people developing on their platform, or, and it's helping their guys. So, so that's a new, concept in the mainstream and not so much in open source, but it leads to the question is, what's your advice? I mean, just you know, just on a personal level to folks in the enterprise that might be watching who say, hey, we got to invest heavily, mm -hmm. we got to do transform our architecture to modern, we want to go cloud, but we got on-premise, I got to get new tools, and I want open source. We're obviously scaling out, I'm buying a lot of gear, mm -hmm. and I don't want to be restricted on data centers, I want to scale it out and use industry standard hardware. How do they deal with open source? What's your advice? Because that's a question Gosh. we get all the time. 
So when you get that question all the time, what is the concern? Is it a legal concern? Or no, is it's it just a, like, how do I, what's the mechanics? I mean, do I hire different people? Like, IT has always sure. been kind of like this closed operational focus. Yeah. Now the investment is coming in saying, hey, we want BYOD, bring your device to work. We want to have mobile apps, we want mm -hmm. SaaS, and we got to have our business model be SaaSified. Yeah. And well, so the, they got to do it with open source. The best advice I can give to enterprises wishing to adopt open source is to actually become involved in the community. And that's something that a lot of companies are are slowly figuring out is, you can't just take the bits off the internet and deploy them and get them working. It's really much better if you understand how they're built and understand how they're developed and who's developing them and what their motivations are and you insert yourself into the conversation to make sure that when you deploy, you have the intelligence, you have the lifeline if you need it as well in the community for, for help and uh, you have a way to influence the direction of the technology but it all comes from participation and contribution. Well, it's interesting just your title, you know, Vice President of Community. Yeah. And it's kind of funny to watch titles evolve over time, like, you know, CMOs and, 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 and different things that kind of follow the there trend are, of the technology. Of but, yeah. not, <laughs> but, but I wonder if there'll be a lot more, because as you said, it's, uh, you can't, you know, you can't pull a head fake on the community. You can't feed them uh, a line that's not supported with other stuff. You'll quickly be found out and, and you'll cause more harm than good, so. Yeah, and community is, I mean, it, it, it is becoming an executive discussion topic, you know, which right. is, is something that's new. You know, it's the, the discussion used to be about it with community used to be about do I allow my engineers to contribute to an open source community, and now it's about how can I align my company with the motivations of this community. Right. Or, or if you're in the case of Ink Tank, you know, how can we uh, build a, a broad ecosystem, you know, uh, around this technology right. and still have a business. Right. 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 So these kinds of questions, uh, I, I think we will see more VP of community titles because these types of questions are business questions. Right. And they're high level strategic questions. They're so not. They're not as tactical as they used to be. What What are some of the uh, kind of uh, legacy frameworks? in terms of thinking that you guys have overcome as a company, and maybe Ink Tank's not the right company because it's relatively new and it's kind of built out of the open source project. Yeah, we, we got lucky because we were an open source project first, right, right. right? Which means that a lot, of the, a lot of the spirit and company culture were there. But we still have conversations every day about, well, how do, how do we differentiate our services from the other services in the ecosystem? You know, right, how, how, do right. we, how, how do we align ourselves as a business and still facilitate a community? Like, what, what is that balance? Right. And, that's, it's, it's a conversation we have every day, right. and we'll have every day as long as the company is around. Yeah. And you should, as soon as you stop having that conversation, then you're going to start blowing it. But again, you feel, fundamentally, because of where you are and, 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 and what you've decided to do with your career, that that's a solvable problem. You can effectively build a business around an open source foundation Absolutely. Uh, technology Absolutely. and really do it effectively. Yeah, unquestionably. I mean, there are a lot of bad examples, but there are a lot of good examples <laughs> too. You know, uh, <laughs> a lot of companies have done it really, really well. Yeah. And uh, I think it's definitely possible. I actually, uh, I, th I, think, uh, I think it's unavoidable. Yeah. Okay, we're here with Ross Turk inside theCUBE talking about Ceph and open source, all the great magic that's happening, uh, awesomeness that's happening here at OpenStack. <laughs> Final question for you, I want you to kind of get the last word in. I want you to, and, and take your time, there's no, you don't need to be a short answer. Sure. Um, obviously DevOps, we talked yesterday heavily, that's now mainstream, a lot of people recognize DevOps as, as a mindset and a movement that's legitimate. I want you to comment on um, your opinion of infrastructure as code. I mean, a lot of us folks talk about that in the communities, because that's a great way to look at programmable infrastructure, but it's now, that's now coming into the mainstream, and it's a concept that uh, a lot of people are talking about, like service mesh, et cetera. What is infrastructure as code? What does that mean to, you know, in, into the world? Infrastructure as code. I that's an interesting question for me because I've always thought about it that way. You know, I've always been a program. <laughs> I started as a programming system system administrator. Um, yes, that's that. That is actually a really interesting question. I, I, I never saw the separation for DevOps that a lot of people saw. You know, I think that that was somewhat manufactured by by the way companies were put together. Um, yeah, I, I don't think infrastructure and development are, are different, and I don't think they really ever yeah. have been. Uh, there it's it is, he's, he's been living infrastructure's code since he's been <laughs> breathing uh, in IT, and, and this is obviously scale out open source. Ross, thanks for coming inside theCUBE and thanks. sharing uh, what's going on with Ceph, appreciate it. Uh, this is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of OpenStack Summit. Here we're day three live, wall to wall blanket coverage. Uh, we'll be right back, extracting more signal from the noise, sharing that with you guys. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>